Welcome, I'm back. This time, an adventure in adding a second lead screw to a single lead screw 3D printer. Are you ready? Here we go. Welcome back. Well, first of all, let's introduce each other. My name is Paul, and this is my channel where nerdy is cool. I'm big into 3D printing, calibrations, how to print, tutorials. I've got a bunch of interests. I've built an R2-D2, Stormtrooper, Dark Knight suit, all that kind of fun stuff. So that's a little bit about me. If you've never seen my stuff before, I would love it if you click the button down below and become a subscriber. I don't want you to miss any of my cool videos. So with that behind us, this is the longer LK4X, and it is a 3D printer that came with a single lead screw. And as I mentioned in the opener, we had an issue with this thing, lag lead kind of issue, where it was going all over the place. So one of the things that I looked around for, because I've done second lead screws on other machines, is for a kit that would work with this. And Longer doesn't seem to offer one for this specific printer. I found a lot of information about the Model 5, well, LK5 or LK5 Pro, I think, but nothing for this particular machine. So I took it upon myself to basically, I was trying to find the Creality kit, but I wound up with the Hicktop kit. And it's supposed to work for the CR10 and the Ender 3. And it gives you the second lead screw. It gives you the motor and the bracket and the mount piece in the back. And it also gives you the uh, two into one wire uh, so that you can plug that into the motherboard and use the Y adapter, which note to self, we don't use that. So <clears throat> the kit arrived and one of the things I was excited about was getting this thing plugged into work. And I noticed first off that once I started to plug pieces in, I was noticing that they were not properly aligned. Um, I, as I show in this picture here, you're going to see that the bottom piece here does not line up with the front piece. Now, this is where I probably could have stopped and made my life a whole lot easier because really the front piece was fine. When I refer to the front piece, I mean this right here. The piece in the back, which came with the Hicktop kit, one of the things that I have, could have done to fix this is I could have just made the hole a little bit longer, elongated it, and then put the nut in there, you know, the, the screw in the nut, and probably all of my problems would be solved. But no, Paul took the hard road. So one of the things I was curious about is I was suspicious about the stock plate. I the fact that, you know, I could not make these eccentric, I'm sorry, the, the, the V-slot wheels all make contact and fit together and stay snug baffled me. So I was starting to suspect that maybe my plate was a little warpy or something's up with that. So I wanted to consider this bad hardware. So the next thing I wanted to do was I thought, well, these things are largely clones of clones of clones. So I thought, well, maybe what I should do is take a look at something like the CR10 or Ender 3, get hold of one of those plates and match it up with the Hicktop back plate and see how that aligns with the holes. And the cool thing is, is if you're looking for the parts uh, for an Ender 3, they actually have on GitHub, you can download the CAD files for an Ender 3. All the parts are there. And as a matter of fact, uh, I grabbed uh, this bracket and isn't this beautiful? We're rapid prototyping. I printed it and I wanted to see how it lined up with the back piece. And one of the things that was quickly obvious to me was this is going to have to be changed. Okay, so I have the 3D printed Ender 3 part and I have the one that came with the longer. So as I overlay these, I'm quickly figuring out that, well, okay, one hole lines up, another hole lines up, but another one doesn't. So I'm going to have to elongate one of the holes for the wheels. And just like what's going on in the back here, right? So that makes sense, okay? Now, <clears throat> one of the things I didn't catch early on is that as I line this up, I realized that Longer is doing something different than the Creality machines and the clones uh, just like them. The holes that are here, I'm sorry, here and here, these are the two holes that go into the 2020 rail here and attach this, okay? And what Longer does is their holes are further in. They're closer <laughs> than the uh, ones for the uh, Creality. So if you think I was put off elongating one hole, well, guess what? Now I have to create 
or elongate two others in order for the new piece to attach to this. And that's fine. I, like I said, I, I, I'm suspicious of that part. It's bad. It's bad mojo. It's time to make a new one. So using the Creality files uh, over to my uh, buddy shop, Fred, we went over and I had some eighth inch aluminum and we had to take a little material off the top to make it three millimeter to be identical and basically made a new bracket. So here you can see CNC'd, uh, went through and put on the belt sander, cleaned it up nicely. And then it was B-Blast, brought it back to the house. I put a coat of primer on it, left that for about 24 hours, put some black paint, cause it'd be nice to match it up with the printer. Uh, put a second coat on there and I was set to go. So once I did a little bit of drilling and tweaking and what have you, everything lines up. So you're probably thinking to yourself, well, was it worth it? Well, it was a lot of work. So here's what's going on. So as we put this together, everything's lining up. That's great. You know, the, the screws are parallel to where they're supposed to be. And as the uh, V-slot wheels are going on and we're tightening up the eccentric nut, that's fine. This is fine. This one's wiggly again. This is just, it's not free spinning, but it's definitely got some spin to it. So <laughs> that's a little frustrating, but okay. But now we have a lead screw and another motor holding things in place. So the next part of this was getting everything wired up. And I got a little video clip here where you can see that on the uh, motherboard of this particular printer, there is a second um, plug-in for a Z motor. And based on some of the feedback I saw from others, the kit comes with a Y adapter where you basically, you know, plug that in and plug both motors into the, the, the Y plugs. And the consensus was that doesn't work. Just go plug this one motor directly into the second port and you're good to go. So I did that and without the lead screw or anything attached, I just turned the printer on. I commanded it to go up and down and the motor was moving in the correct orientation. So that's good. That's good, right? So I worked on getting everything together. The next part was making sure that this was all jigged up properly. So I used some spacers uh, to make sure that these were fine. There's a lot of wiggling back and forth between uh, each lead screw to make sure that they were parallel. Uh, so again, we're just making sure that the, I guess the best way I can say this is we're, we're, we're tramming. We're making every, make sure everything is square, so to speak. So that part went pretty well. And then it was time to just go ahead and let the printer do some leveling. So when I say leveling, what I did is I went through, I didn't do the automatic leveling utilizing the touch sensor. I went through and I did each corner. Um, I noticed on the, for whatever reason, the way this was shipped, it seemed like you were always going as far as you could on the spring to get this side level. So I released the springs a good deal. So I had more um, area to work with, so to speak. And once I had everything, I went around three or four times making sure that each corner was happy using a piece of paper. And then I went through with the automatic leveling. That was no problem. And then it was time to do some prints. And I did a flow cube and I got these prints here. And the, essentially what I wanted to do, the whole reason for all of this was that every print, it was a disaster because it just, the prints were awful because this thing was bouncing all over the place. And I can show you on these prints, all I did was start one G code, then the next one, then the next one. Uh, I've done a bunch of additional prints uh, in blue here. You can see the blue filament. So if you're wondering why a blue filament and yellow prints, <laughs> I just did a bunch of these guys too, spacers I need for another build. A close up of these, you're gonna see that, for example, the 3D print test, that thing came out absolutely great. I mean, this printer is capable of doing some excellent prints. I went through, I made some changes in my slicer. Um, I did the little 3D printed Lucky Cat. That looks great. And the blue pieces as well, like I said, you know, those, those are pretty easy things to print, but they look fantastic. So the long and short of it is if you're willing to put in the time, effort and frustration, <laughs> you can yield some good results. So what do you think? Was, uh, <laughs> was it worth it to put all this work into this? <laughs> this is about a $350 printer, but I can tell you, I mean, right now, I mean, it's printing great. I'm very happy with the results I'm getting. I probably should have done what other people had recommended early on in the Facebook group, just elongate that one hole and you're good to go. But I really wanted to replace that front piece because I just, I don't know, I'm, I, I, it's, it's got bad voodoo, <laughs> there's something. So, so that's it for this time. Remember, you can see what I'm up to on Facebook, Instagram, and X slash Twitter. Uh, you can see my links right over here. Go check those out. 
And as always, I invite you guys to check out the affiliate links down below. Those do benefit me and the channel, which help fund these kooky upgrades. So check them out and save some money. That's it for this time. Please, please, please print safe. Take care.